Hey guys, and welcome to Walking Dead Michonne. Sort of a spin-off mini-series for the Walking Dead Telltale games. They've done two seasons in the past that have so far been totally separate from the comics and the show, while actually being in, you know, canon with the comics. This takes a step further. Walking Dead Michonne is actually supposed to be part of the story of the comics themselves, and they cover what happens with this character when she disappears for if I remember correctly, about 10 issues, somewhere in the ballpark of issue 130 or so. Uh, just for a quick reference, for those of you that are only watching the show, that means that we're probably dealing with a storyline that's about 40 episodes, about 40 issues further along in the story than the show currently is, as far as I can tell. And so, we, I have no idea what story elements they'll refer to, so just be forewarned, there may be spoilers for plot points that might happen on the show, maybe, or maybe not. But, uh, we, it's, we can't tell, because I haven't played the game yet. But you've been forewarned just in case. But it's not, it's supposed to not be the story of the game itself. I mean, the, uh, the show itself, or the, sh the comic itself, but a side story for one ind individual character. So how about we get started? Say hello to Michonne. For those of you that don't watch the show or read the comics, this is just a badass warrior girl that's one of the most uh, capable survivors in the Walker Walking Dead universe, or at least that's followed by any of the narratives that we have so far. And so she's going to be quite the change of pace from the protagonist that we've had for the, the previous two seasons of Walking Dead, the video games. And this is going to be a three-episode series. Don't actually know when the next ones come out. You, get, you can get the tiniest previews of them. They're going to be called Give No Shelter and What We Deserve. We'll find out what the context is for that. But this one is called In Too Deep. Let's give it a start. I left so many people that I loved behind. So many that I can hardly remember them all. But there are two. Just two that I can never forget. Interesting. She sounds like she might actually be the voice actor from from the uh, show, and I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I thought I was done with them. But they're not done with me. It's certainly nice to see their art styles continually improving over time, and just getting increasing inf increasing infidelity for the Walking Dead universe. Wow. Guess I didn't hammer hard enough. <laughs> Ugh! <sighs> 
Some days I envy the dead. Rashid, come in. Over. Vanessa! You there? God damn it. Hey, Pete. Michonne. What are you doing up? Your shift isn't for another hour. Couldn't sleep. Having those nightmares again. You holding up okay? Don't worry about you. You're not the easiest to read. It's hard to tell how you're really doing. I honestly don't know. This stuff you're dealing with, it's not gonna go away overnight. Just please tell me if, you know, if it gets as bad as it did. I just need to keep busy. Oak! Oak! Walk! Get down here, Michonne's taking your ship. Two minutes! I still haven't heard from Rashid or Vanessa. It's not like those guys to be in a contact for this long. We trade every time I come through, same spot. Everything's just gone. It just doesn't make sense. Their boat is always anchored right on the dock. Something might have happened to them, Pete. Maybe they just didn't make it. And maybe they're still out there. Maybe they need our help. We just don't know. That's the problem. Maybe we can pass by again on our way back. Listen. You hear it? You hear it, right? Sounds like a woman's voice. Vanessa, that you? I hear static. No, no, it's, it's more than just static. Hey. Michonne? Ah, again with the short wave? I'm not just giving up. This bay was full of boats just a year ago. They went somewhere. If they left, it was probably for good reason. Then I want to know why. <sighs> Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? You heard it that time, right? She said help. I don't know, Pete. Didn't sound like Vanessa. But it's someone. She might know what happened here. No, damn it! 
We're losing the signal. Look, if we don't start caring about the people that are out there, we're no better than the damn walkers. All we'll find out there is trouble, Pete. I mean it. What's the point in just surviving? We gotta do better than that. All right, so let's help her. At least someone gets in. You're the only one on this boat that even comes close to understanding. Not Berto, not Sadiq, especially not fucking Oak. You know there are people worth helping. Take over for me, okay? I'm gonna turn the boat around. So what I'm hoping here is that I want this game to capitalize on one of the things that I find really interesting about Walking Dead, because we've had a million zombie stories before, but every zombie movie and show and so on is always about like, here's the big outbreak, everyone's dying, oh no, someone's gonna turn and eat one of their loved ones, but Walking Dead has been going on for so many years now, and they just keep pushing the timetable forward. So at this point, the Walking Dead comic is actually more less about a zombie outbreak and more about living in this post-apocalyptic world that has zombies. Like, it's more like Mad Max of these little settlements trying to survive in this hostile world. And that's where we are now. The first two seasons of the Walking Dead video game were both continuously just... They're all, they're, they had these nice interpersonal moments with cool characters, but it was ultimately just about running away for most of the storyline. At this point in the 130 issues or whatever that this is based on, uh, it's no longer a new outbreak. The zombie apocalypse happened years ago, and now this is the this is just a post-apocalypse. This is what this world is now. Sorry, try to fit something in there, because of course, uh, they, they, can go for, they can go on for a while sometimes. <laughs> talking to anything I heard her barely I knew it oh this is a bad idea Pete you want to find more people you're forgetting what people are like what is she Can't see a damn thing! Everyone okay? Berto! Sadiq! You guys better get up here! What do we hit? Hell if I know! I can't see a damn thing! Berto! Hold the wheel steady! Take them those sails! Now! Sadiq! Get down! Are you alright? Thanks for the save. Jesus! Oh, get the jib under control! Damn shortwave. You just had to take us in close, right into a fucking rock! Hey, I've been sailing these waters for years. There aren't any rocks here. Well, then what the hell was that? Something else. You said it yourself. Something's going on around here. This place isn't safe anymore, Pete. Your friends are gone, and whatever scared them off is gonna find us next. I told you this was a bad idea. You're just being paranoid. It's not paranoia if you're right. We're stuck out here, nowhere to go. We shouldn't have been wasting our time out here. You all need to calm down. We don't know anything yet. She's right. Panicking about it won't make us any less stuck. That girl on the shortwave. What if she's part of it? Guys, pull it together. Oak, Sadiq, get those sails tied down. Once we've checked for damage, we can haul off. Ease our way out. Go on. Michonne, what exactly did she say? She said her name was Sam. I couldn't hear much else. Michonne, take these. See if you can figure out what we got stuck on. Just see if we're close to anything. 
I mean, I need to know what our options are. We just need to get ourselves moving again. For all our sakes. Their concerns are completely valid at this point in the storyline. Uh, zombies? Still a threat, but humans are always the biggest threat, and uh, they lo a lot. There's always those groups that like to prey on others instead of build something for themselves. The inevitable raiders and bandits you see in most storylines. So you can alternate alternate between flashlight and binoculars. Looks like I'm stuck on a uh, flashlight, more or less. All right. Yeah, I know. I'm working on it. Huh. I can click on the wheel, no problem, but the, uh, over here... Oh, there we go. My bad. So I've played previous games in this if by this company on a console before. Apparently you click on the use binoculars text above the wheel. Alright. I do not see anything out here. Just a general grayness. Not much to see out there. Let's take a look around. Anything sticking out of the boat? Whatever we hit, it's probably not person-sized. That would uh, something. We'd have to have something pretty big to actually shake the entire thing. Not exactly a small vehicle. I need to find some food soon. It's interesting. So on PC, you actually highlight the wheel, then you highlight the text above the wheel. Whereas on a on console, you actually press the one of the four face buttons on the controller. We should start producing fruit one of these days. So Michonne has lost a lot when the apocalypse happened in the first place. Uh. I, I believe she, I think she, yeah, she actually had a, uh, had, had children and a boyfriend, or, or husband, I forget which one, and he and his friend both got infected, and... There it is. Hey, Pete. Figured out what we're stuck on. Damn. At least it's not Rashid's boat. Hey, Michelle. Hope no one's still on that boat. I don't want to die like that. Sorry. I just seen a lot of bad shit go down. I just... I don't want to see this fall apart, you know? I've seen better places than this get torn to shreds. It's not gonna fall apart. Maybe you're right. I shouldn't let him see me slacking off like this. It's interesting trying to figure out how to roleplay Michonne, because, uh, for the longest time, she was the optimist of the show and the optimist of the comics and everything that insists that everything can be fixed. But I believe at this point, the reason why she's out here is because her confidence has been broken by something. Anything out here? Oh yeah, we're, we're probably gonna see something human out here. But yeah, she lost everybody. The people, the person he, that she loved was infected. She actually stole a samurai sword from the next house over, which is what she uses now. You see anything out there? Looks like an old fairy. Could be worth checking out. You know, extra parts, maybe some food. Maybe. Once she fa uh, once the apocalypse happened, she stole the sword. She actually chopped the jaws off of the newly zombified version of her of her loved one and and his best friend, and used them as decoys. She would camouflage around them because other zombies would see them not attacking her and would just not see her as someone to target. And she would just walk through hordes, no big deal, no human contact for such a long time, slowly going insane, more or less. So. uh... She really saw it as a, a chance to turn over a new leaf once she found herself back in some sort of semblance of a new society. These things are ancient. No wonder they broke.
Hey, Michonne, we could use a hand here. Maybe we gotta bleed the wind out of this sail. I stand by what I said. Pete isn't cautious enough. But he's just an optimist. You can call it what you like, but we shouldn't be trying to find people. We should be staying the hell away from them. Look where we are. You think this is an accident? Damn wind. Grab it. Grab it! You're saying this is a trap. People do anything to survive these days. And to get their hands on a boat like this? <laughs> oh, you think you've got it all figured out, don't you? <laughs> Thanks. But we can think of it. There's actually a character in this storyline, not this one particularly necessarily, but that, that actually n n took note of the fact that she apparently has no training with Sam with the the katana she wields, and that's because she stole it from the next door neighbor. She actually trained as a fencer, so she doesn't use her sword correctly for what it's designed for. But it was the weapon that she was able to find when every when the shit hit the fan, and it's what she uses now. Looks complicated. Pete. Find anything? Saw a ferry. Maroon near the shore. A ferry? Didn't see a ferry last time I was here. Tiller lever shot. It snapped in two. The what? Tiller lever. Connects the wheel to the... Look, I don't know shit about boats. Just tell me what you need. Might have what we need to fix this damn thing. It's the best option we got. What about your friends? You think they could be out there? Hopefully we find some sign of them. Rashid knew the area better than anybody. He'd know where to find the parts we need. Let's round up the crew. Michonne and I will scout the ferry, see what we can find. All right, so we're just gonna sit around waiting for you. You wish. You've got work to do. You didn't answer my question, though. Oh, Christ, here we go again. Guys. You three. Catch the boat, pull her out of here, and lay anchor near the shoreline. Got it. Don't go anywhere. Stay near the boat and keep her safe. Interesting, we just have a machete here. Don't let this turn into a rescue mission. Forget his friends, right? Best get the parts and get back here. Pete means well, but you know what they say about good intentions. I can't make that promise. If someone's in trouble, I'm not gonna just leave them. We can't lose anyone else. Come on, let's get going. You ready? I'm starting to feel a little bad for not rereading this part of the comics to remind myself why she's out here. But if she doesn't have her sword, there's a decent chance that she hung it up out of guilt. She has a tendency to do that. She more or less constantly aspires towards a future where she doesn't have to ever use her sword again. Sure is quiet out here, huh? Not a sound. Kind of peaceful in a way. Don't... It would be. If you weren't talking so damn much. Ouch. <laughs> I can't tell if you're joking. I actually meant that more of a joke than it came across. <laughs> it's so quiet, well then stop talking. You know, something's really been bothering me, and I have to ask. What? Do you think this looks dumb? Oh, what? I don't know, Oak's been giving me shit about it. Says I look like a pirate. What do you think? Be honest. 
I want to know. Well, the man's not wrong. Hey, now. Damn. <sighs> you I'd get you to loosen up sooner or later. You're always so serious. It's gotta be exhausting. I'm sure you have your reasons. Just makes it hard to get to know people. I think you're exaggerating. This is you. All right, I get it. You know, when we first brought you on board, never thought you'd decide to stick around. You didn't talk to anybody. I just assumed you'd take off the minute you got your strength back. And I keep expecting to wake up and find this dinghy gone. And you with it. But here you are. Haven't got sick of me yet. What can I say? You're not terrible company. <laughs> I'm flattered. When we met, you were... I mean, I saw what you were about to do. You haven't had it easy out there. I know you mostly keep it to yourself. I don't want to make you talk about it. Not unless you want to. Being out of the water, keeping busy. It helps. If I stop even for a minute, it starts to catch up to me again. When things are quiet, I end up thinking too much. You know, before this, I was just on my own, like you were. I convinced myself I liked it that way. But after a while, I just... Well, that was abrupt. Oh, that's some shallow water. I can see how people got in trouble. Both going down! Only chance! Kinda hard to swing your sword underwater. Oh, that's the pause button somehow. How did I do that? Guess I should have kept my mouth shut, huh? <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Jesus. That could have been a lot worse, you know. Yeah. I know. I kind of meant that more in a relieved sense, like, oh, that could have been so much worse. <laughs> 